I'm in the backyard of our small half acre spot where Sasha and I live. You can see the greenhouse there attached to the house and the cattle panel, high tunnels, lots of elements from different videos that we've talked about. And here we are in the main garden in the backyard. And what I thought I would do in this video is put some focus on uh, specifics and details of a waterway and how I'm trying to refine and enhance the functionality of it, hold on to more fertility, hold on to more soil in the landscape. Uh, and so let me get into it with you. It's been windy off and on today, so I have spared no expense and took an old sock and put it over the microphone on this camera. So hopefully it isn't too blustery, but if the audio is weird, it's because you're listening to this through a sock. Anyway, <laughs> here we are in the southwest corner of the garden where there's a pond element and part of the reason why there's a pond here is there it to the south of us going up slope so we are on a north facing gentle slope there's a particular lull in the landscape you can almost see with your eye a minor valley now we get out of our ability to do stewardship once we get into that large lawn and the trees further up slope but water absolutely wants to push its way through the landscape and this is one of the highest pressure points so a uh, high point in the property feels like a good opportunity to create the first place to store water in the landscape and so i dug this pond out about six years ago but there's a particular issue with it that i think i may have gotten past so nothing huge nothing crazy with the size of this it's about maybe five or six feet across about maybe four feet deep in the very center, more like three. And what had happened was that uh, I made a mistake that was probably pretty avoidable, but whatever, it happened, and so I'll just share it with you. Uh, acknowledging that water is focusing through this lull and coming down anyway through here. This was a lawn six years ago, but as we sheet mulched it and gardened in here, we found that this was always mucky and wet. Very few things were happy to grow. So we thought rather than uh, trenching the water, getting it fully out of the landscape, or worse yet, setting in drainage tile. Let's create a water feature and focus that water. But what I did was I took uh, the water where it felt like it was coming in the most aggressively, and I dug a trench and figured, okay, well, I'll dig out a hole, and this way the water can fill right in there. And for those of you that know what's up with small ponds or even large ponds, when you take uh, a creek or water in a landscape and you aim it directly into a pond, you are asking for silt deposition. And so over the course of three or four years, this hole, this pond, basically filled in with silt and is beautiful, lots of cattails and all that, but no more room for water. And so this spring I went through with a shovel, I dug all of that muck out. Luckily we've got production spaces all very nearby. I'm learning over time when I dig a pond or dig a waterway, I want to have plants in association and garden beds that would enjoy the silt. So in this case, we've got some hazelnuts. Over here, we have some sea berry and some currants, all of which appreciate stool layering. So as we dug the muck out, it could all be banked against the stems of these plants. And you can see here they are with their crowns buried and the sea berries likewise, they're starting to sucker and spread. Sea berry particularly tolerant of this muck soil. And so it was a harvest along with management to get that soil out. And now instead of having the water go directly in, part of what I excavated out with a shovel, I bermed up so that this water can no longer come directly in, but instead channelized it to come down a little further and hit a big wad of hay that then dug out just a little bit, passively bleeds in through the hay. And you can see that what's happening. We had some rain and snow last night. It's part of the reason why I'm doing this video. Since June, there's been a fair amount of silt that's coming into here, but harvesting the silt from this walkway it's not a very easy to access walkway. It's not a common space we're gonna be in all the time in the garden. But now I can come through with a shovel, scoop that out and apply it to the plants right nearby that would appreciate it. And that silt stays out of the pond and the water can passively slip its way through the soil 
and get into the pond. The next layer of evolution in this design will be to add cuttings of perhaps willow, elderberry, currants right along here. This would be a less accessible, more like zone three, zone four space. Uh, not where I do cut and come again lettuce or things like that, but maybe nursery and shrub layers. But this pond is now a lot more functional. We put four fish in there this fall, and I suspect it should be able to stay pretty clear. Inevitably and quite easily, this pond overflows. It's not a lot of holding capacity and we are a very wet landscape. So once it overflows, you can kind of see uh, where it fills in, leads in. If there's a real peak event, uh, two inches of rain out of nowhere, it can the rushing water can skip coming into the pond and go directly into the overflow, which is a relatively flat and broad space that we've populated with watercress. And we had some rice growing in there, and now it's just winter watercress. That should perk up in the spring and provide some really nice nutrient for us. And it's also more soil and fertility capture high enough in the landscape scrubs out some of the excess nutrients, some of the bits of soil. Then it gets a little weedy, but that's fine because that's helping to filter too. And it goes to the next holding, which is a little well. Not going to spend a lot of time talking about this. I'll link here to a video where I talk about this in greater detail. We use a solar panel and a bilge pump to lift water from that simple well casing, which is made out of roof metal, to fill this galvanized tank so we can use that water to water in the garden. So it's another opportunity to draw water up and out and redistribute it more evenly in the landscape before it leaves. But of course, inevitably, that is going to overflow. Now it enters another channel with watercress. It moves past some rice and calamus production. So we're going, we're leaning into who are the wet loving plants that can associate with this again. And you can see rather than a sharp channel, it is going through a sinuous curve. Every time you can make, you can suggest water to make a new direction in its pathway, it's an opportunity for it to slow down, drop more nutrient and be absorbed by the landscape more. My plan, if we have the time, is to actually berm this overflow up just a little bit and dig the walkways out in this area a little deeper so there can be these chinampas where there'll be water periodically. This is a rough sketch right now. There's a perennial cold hardy ginger in this bed and there are some willows and currants and elders being held in this bed in a heel bed. Once those come out, we'll do a review, but in the spring they should be two three foot wide beds with much deeper walkways and anytime the water table's high, there'll be a little bit of standing water in there and some real wet loving plant production happening. And of course, keeps overflowing, keeps on going. And what I'd like to do is spend a little time talking about the pond down slope of here and how we're evolving a, a more thorough silt trapping system down in here. And the wind is picking up, so hopefully this sock is working. Um, Again, the water is coming through. We're going further north, so down slope, and another sharp turn, another turn. Used to have the water coming directly into this pond, and again, that would silt this up. So we blocked that off, planted some turtle head, uh, some perennial wet loving plants, some aronias, and then had the water channel down and around and then be impounded a little bit here so it can wick and equalize into this pond. And that's helped reduce silt quite a bit. This is another pond that is asking for more vegetation around the edges, I think, more complexity. And so what I went ahead and did yesterday was we had this channel. This was getting weedy. I mucked this out. And in another video, I talked about how we dug out a silt trap here where as the water is accelerating, it could drop out and deposit silt and be put up on this bed. And yesterday I went through and I deepened this. I harvested the silt that had accumulated from this season and put it up onto this bed. I harvested some of the silt to berm up to make the speed bump a little bit more aggressive. So the water has to really crest before it can push through. And I started yet another speed bump 
a silt catch here with another speed bump and observed it after the rain. This was all dry yesterday and now it's filled in. And what I'm seeing, which is really promising, relatively clear water and then past the speed bump. Yes, it's moist, but it's not running water. And I'm definitely not seeing soil moving after that rain. Let me continue on. Once we go further north and out into the common hedgerow, the water is pretty close to being lost if we just send it out that way. There's one last layer of design that I've added that I'd like to look at. We're kind of coming into a part of the property that we don't spend a lot of time in. It's a, a landscape space that is not quite ours, not quite our neighbors. But let me explain what I'm thinking here. This wooden fence is our neighbor's fence. So this is the western boundary of the property. The property line pin is somewhere down by the road. Somewhere within a few feet of here, not quite sure. Our line ends, their line begins. But what I do know for sure is that the water we were just looking at running through this channel, you can see here it's picking up steam again. And it will continue its track northbound from here in this trench. The landscape flattens out a little bit, which is beneficial. There are some ferns which can collect some more silt, so that's nice. But before it gets there, this is what we've added in two days ago, is we made two rows of willow collection. And so the thought will be, rather than having the water come down, hit 90 degrees and head north, we'll berm this up a little bit and dig out a walkway through here that we can use to hill up around these different cultivars of willow. And so now the water will have two different channels to move through with roadblocks on the far end to keep water in here to have silt deposit. And each year we can harvest that silt and put it up against the stems of these willows to help them root. All in the spirit of stacking function where these willows will continue to grow and we'll manage them so that their vegetation is right around the line of our neighbor's kitchen window and the view of our landscape to help give them a cleaner, nicer view and to give us a little bit more privacy. So willow islands to create beauty and privacy, more landing places for all these amazing birds that really love this little channel in here and a chance to scrub out more nutrient and silt before it gets to the road starting to snow here so I'd like to get to work uh, so I can stay warm. My hands are cold just blabbing along here. Um, what I'd want to convey and hopefully it does just convey naturally in saying this is clearly uh, at the outset of this we did not have a thorough design plan, things mapped out, laser levels, etc. This has been a multi-year project of slow iterative adjustments. Because we're doing this with hand tools observe and interact style, the permaculture principle. There's an opportunity to make uh, repair maneuvers and adjustments to see what works, what doesn't, either go deeper with the design direction or interrupt that and adjust it. And so here we are a number of years later, I'm sure it will continue to evolve. And right now what I can do is take the start of the sketch of this interruption of the water flow and use the water level to inform extending this out a little further so the silt can be deposited deeper into these beds. So I'm going to shush up for a minute and actually get to it. Hopefully you'll join me and continue on.